Hello and welcome to this electrical science training video. In a couple of previous videos in this series, we fairly comprehensively answered the question, are the lights in my property wired in series or in parallel with each other? And we found that in most cases, even when you've got two or more lights controlled from one switch, that they're always wired in parallel. So that's quite naturally given rise to the question, is there ever an occasion when we connect lights or loads in series with each other? Well, we're going to answer that question in this video, and we're gonna bring the camera in nice and close and help to explain why I've got these decorative lights all around my worktop here. But just before we do that, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who's bought me a coffee recently. If you appreciate the work that the channel is doing and if you'd like to see it keep ticking along, then please do feel free to click the link in the description below to buy me a coffee. However, there's absolutely no pressure to do that because I'm always gonna keep on trying to create this content for as long as I can. But it's there as an option if you'd like it. Right, on with the video. Okay, so we've got our electronics board here in front of us and I've made a very, very simple circuit with just one resistor connected in it for the moment. Now, I've made a lot of videos and content about resistors connected in series with each other, but we're just gonna do a very quick recap here because it's going to help us understand exactly what's happening with this. Now, there's one very strange thing about these decorative lights and that's that each one of these little lamps here is rated at 12 volts. So that means that if you put any more than 12 volts through it, within reason, then it's going to melt the little filament inside there and that lamp is going to stop working. However, we've got all of these lamps connected to a 230 volt supply. And actually in reality, it's probably more like a 240 volt supply uh, when we actually measure it. So how can it be that we've got these little 12 volt lamps connected to such a high voltage and yet they continue to work all the time? Well, the answer lies in the fact that these are connected in series with each other. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the electronics board just to explain exactly what's going on here because this is gonna illustrate what's happening inside the decorative lights and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some measurements on the decorative lights to prove that what I'm telling you is actually true. Okay, so first things first, I've got my electronics board here and I've set up a very simple circuit. You can see here we've got a voltage supply, we're using an AC supply so that it's very similar to what we're using for the decorative lights in a moment. And you can see here at the moment, I've just got one load connected. Now, it's important to bear in mind that when we show electrical loads connected in circuit diagrams and when we do maths with them, if it's a purely resistive load like we've got here, this is just a little filament of wire, so this just acts as a resistive load effectively, we can illustrate that, we can represent that by using a resistor. There's no real connection between this being 18 ohms and any resistance inside here, there's no connection there. It's just the fact that I happen to have three of these to illustrate this point. Now I'm gonna to have to work quite quickly here, so I'm gonna plug in the voltage there. So this has now got a supply to it, and I'm gonna measure the voltage across these two terminals. As you can see from meter cam, we've got about 13 volts thereabouts. Now I'm just gonna quickly unplug that, because this resistor doesn't have a very high power rating, and it will start to melt and burn out if I leave that connected for too long. So we've got about a 13 volt supply coming in here. Now, if we measure what the voltage across this single resistor is by itself, what do you think it's going to be? Let's plug it in and find out. Again, we'll try and do this nice and quick before it melts. So let's connect across there. And you can see, once again on meter cam, we're getting the same value, just over 13 volts. So the whole of the voltage supplied here is appearing across the resistor here, as you'd expect. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to swap out one of these links for another 18 ohm resistor. So we're gonna put that in there. So now we've got two 18 ohm resistors and these are connected in series with each other. Remember what that means? It means that the current has to pass through this resistor to get to this resistor. So we've got two resistors of the same value, that's an important point we'll come back to in a minute, connected in series with each other. Now let's power it back up again. So we'll connect the voltage and measure across this load first of all. I'm gonna swap these over and that make any difference at all. So we measure across there and over on meter cam, you can see we've got about seven volts across that one. And we've got about seven volts across that one, exactly the same. So you can see that the voltage has been split across the two resistors because they have the same value. If we were to put a resistor in here of a different value, you'd find that those two voltages would be different. But because they're the exact same value of resistor, give or take a little bit of tolerance, the voltage is divided equally across both of these. And that's really because in a series circuit, we know that the volt, uh, sorry, in a series circuit, we know that the current is constant. 
So wherever we measured the current in this circuit, we'd get exactly the same value. And it means that you must have the same amount of current flowing through there as you do through there. And because it takes the same amount of voltage to push uh, the same amount of current through the same resistor, those two uh, values of voltage will be exactly the same. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take it up another notch and we're going to add in a third resistor. So these are now connected in series with each other. But instead of two resistors, we've got three. Okay, so we've got three resistors connected in series with each other, all again the exact same value. Now we started off with a voltage supply of about 13 volts, uh, and we found that on this, in this case when we had two, that was almost divided. We're expecting to get six and a half, but again, due to various factors, it was a little bit higher than that. But basically what happened was that the supply voltage was split equally across the two resistors because they had the same value. So what do you expect we're going to get across each of these resistors now? Well, let's power it up, let's plug in the supply, and let's see what the value of voltage is going to be. So again, we'll measure the voltage across the first one of these, and you can see there on meter cam, we're getting 4.8 volts. If we measure across this one, once again, we're getting about 4.7, so very, very nearly the same. There's probably a slight difference in resistance between those two due to manufacturing tolerances. And over on here, again, we're at that 4.7, 4.8 value. So we're actually getting the same amount of voltage across each of these. So in other words, what's happening is that the supply voltage that we've got over here is being split across those three equally. So that's coming out at about that value divided by three. Okay, so at this point you may be asking yourself what these three resistors connected in series have got to do with our decorative lights. Well, as we said, each of these little lamps here is like a little resistor. We can represent uh, the load of that by drawing it as a resistor if we wanted to. And because we've got here a load of exactly the same resistance or near enough exactly the same resistance loads connected in series with, with each other, what it means is that the supply voltage is going to be split equally across each one of these lamps. So just as we found here, the supply voltage was divided equally across the three loads. What we're going to find here is that the supply voltage, again, is going to be equally split across each one of these little lamps. So how many of these have we got? Well, let's power them up. I'm not quite going to get them all on camera because uh, it's a little bit limited, the field of view here, but we'll count them up. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we've got 20 lamps, and each one of these lamps has actually got the same voltage appearing across it. So if we do, let's keep the math nice and simple. Let's assume we've got a 240 volt supply. 240 divided by 20 is going to give us a value of 12 volts. So can you see there, we said at the outset of the video that each one of these is a 12 volt lamp. And that means that each one of these is currently experiencing approximately 12 volts across it, give or take a little bit. But don't just take my word for it. We're actually gonna prove this by measuring it. Now I am just going to make one quick disclaimer before I do the rest of this measurement because if you look at this little lamp here you can see that that one is not shining quite as brightly as the others and that's because it's started to burn out. So it's a good job I've started to do this uh, experiment when I have because I'm not sure how much longer that's going to last. Uh, so what we're going to find is that the, the values might not be exactly what we've predicted they will be but hopefully they'll be somewhere close. Now you can see over here what I've done is I've stripped away a little bit of the insulation away from this. Now, please, please do not try this at home because depending on where you do this, you could actually end up with the full supply voltage across here. If I'd have uh, stripped off the insulation right here at the start of the circuit, I could potentially have two exposed conductors there with 240 volts between them. Uh, and obviously that is extremely dangerous. You'll also notice that I've only stripped off three sections. So that should keep this to about 24 volts which is below uh, the touch voltage, so I shouldn't be running into any harm here. Uh, but please, please, please do not repeat this experiment at home because if you do, you could receive quite literally a lethal shock and we wouldn't like that. So we said we've got a 240 volt supply uh, and we've got 20 lamps or 20 loads. And so the supply voltage 240 divided by the number of equal loads, that's an important point, should give us the same voltage of about 12 volts across each one of these uh, lamps here. So let's see if that's what's happened. We're going to just measure across here to start with. So I'm going to clip between here and here. 
and we'll see what meter cam is telling us. So we'll get that one on there and that one on there. And let's see what we're getting. Well, would you look at that? 12.4 volts. So we're actually getting pretty much exactly where we said we should be, which is really, really exciting. As I say, I think this one here is on its way out, which means it's it's kind of lost a little bit of its material inside there and it's it's sort of shorting a little bit. So I suspect we could take that one out. And what we'd probably find if we measured this accurately at the source, that we'd have 240 divided by sort of 19, because that one's not quite doing its job. So you can see there across each one of these, we're getting uh, around the same voltage. We're looking for that about 12 volts. And that is one very, very clever way of using a very high supply voltage in order to connect up these tiny little lamps which have a much lower voltage rating than the supply. By connecting them in series, effectively what we've done is we've divided that supply voltage across each one to get us what we need. And we've done that by using the principle of loads connected in series and the fact that if each one of those is the same, we'll have the same voltage across each one. And some very simple math has led us to the conclusion that 20 of these little 12 volt lamps connected across a 240 volt supply will give us pretty much the most effective way of getting a 12 volt supply to each one of these lamps that we could want. So there we go, we've looked at one example of where we find lights connected in series with each other. This type of light is very much on its way out now because it's incandescent, it's not very efficient, and as we move towards LED lighting, we're gonna to start to find that these become increasingly rare and hard to get hold of. So I don't think these will be around for very much longer. And it's interesting actually, there is a connection to LED lighting and loads connected in series, but more on that in just a moment. At this point, I'd like to again say thank you very much to all those people who've bought me a coffee and donated to the channel via those means. If you'd like to do the same, please click the link in the description below. Uh, there's absolutely no pressure to do that, but if you'd like to contribute, then that's really the best way of doing it. Now, if you'd like to see a more practical application of loads connected in series, especially when it comes to lighting, and indeed one that you may find scattered around your home, then please click this link right here. And thank you very much for watching.